Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Uh, my name is Jessa Blackthorne, welcome to Much Ado About Gaming, and we have another pretty cool, pretty chill day for you planned like we did last week. We unboxed Waddle, live on stream, chill, with tea and relaxation, and we're gonna do the same thing today, but we have something extra special happening today too. Uh, if you saw our posts about it, we are actually going to be revealing the cover art for our very exciting upcoming release, Super Skill Pinball Ramp It Up, so keep an eye out for that, stay tuned. We're going to be doing that at the end of the show. Uh, but for now, we are going to be unboxing uh, one of our new releases, which is of course Star Trek Alliance Dominion War Campaign. Before I get started, just a couple things. Um, this is a board game themed show, so I always try to cover all of our board games. Sometimes we talk about other product lines as well as they relate to our board games, but this is a show about board games. Uh, v also has a show, those are on Wednesdays at noon, and she talks about miniatures. So if you love board games but you also love miniatures, check out V's show, that's Mini Mayhem, on Wednesdays at noon EST. Um, and if you have a question, please feel free to put it in the chat. Just type QUESTION in all caps and then what your question is, and I will answer that as soon as I see it, if I am able to answer it. I don't know everything, I am unfortunately not all-knowing. I wish I was. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, but I will try and answer any questions that I do know the answers to. Uh, but welcome to the show. I welcome you. Our Penguin Pal Noodles welcomes you. And let's get started with Star Trek Alliance. Star Trek Alliance Dominion War Campaign. Now, uh, to give a little bit of background on this game, this is a new release, of course. This is one of our newest releases. We released it back in February. And the game is a kind of... It's inspired by the Dominion Wars um, on Deep Space Nine. So if you watch Star Trek Deep Space Nine, the Dominion Wars are, of course, a fantastic plotline from that show. And what this game does is it takes a lot of the things that are referenced as having taken place during the Dominion Wars on the show and turns them into a campaign uh, tabletop experience. Uh, this utilizes uh, Star Trek Attack Wing um, miniatures and Star Trek Attack Wing, the system. So if you know how to play Star Trek Attack Wing, you'll have a pretty good baseline for how to play this game. Uh, of course, it uses Heroclix bases uh, as the dials just like or Heroclix Maneuver Dials, that's the word. I forgot the word for a second. Um, for the gameplay, just as an attack wing, and it's a great game and I'm so excited to show it to you. I have got my mug of tea right here. Once again, chai. I love chai tea. I have like a hundred of them at home. So grab your mug of tea and let's unbox Star Trek Alliance. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about with this game box is it's a it's literally brand new i took the plastic off about five minutes before i started this show so it's still in that like new like it, the lid doesn't slide off as easily because it's brand new so the lid has the clear window where the ships were but i want to talk about this insert really fast because it's just i love the way this is laid out it is so beautiful you have the ships right across the bottom and of course if you have the lid on you can see the ships through it and then, sorry, I thought it was gonna fall. Um, and then you have in here, uh, and this is the punch board, of course, for the different tokens and the dials. And then you take that out like so. And right inside you have uh, the majority of the rest of the components. So one thing to keep in mind about this is that there are components underneath the insert. Uh, you can see right here, it's the rule book the rulers and the, the moon thing, which I forgot its name. Uh, the planet tokens, that. I'm bad at remembering the names of things, guys. It's, it, it's a problem. Um, but yeah, so the insert's gorgeous. It's so nicely laid out and it looks so beautiful when you open the box. Like, it, it just, it's like wrapped up like a little present, like, you look at this, like, this reminds me of, like, the ribbon on a gift box. It's just so pretty. 
So that's really cool. It's really fun. Uh, but let's get started with picking up, taking out the components and showing you what everything is. I'm going to just put this down here because I will knock it over and it will attack me. And that's not a nice thing to do. So this is all the punch board for the games. There is quite a bit of tokens involved in this game. And so there is a little bit of punching that you're going to have to do when you start the game. Shere Khan, I love Star Trek too. I'm very excited about this. I know a lot about this game. I'm bad at remembering the names of things, but everything else about this game I know. And it's just so gorgeous. I, I like like the star motif on all the Star Trek stuff that we do. So like, this is so pretty. So we have the different punch board. There are six in all, six, six, there are six in all. Uh, so we have, these are obstacle tokens. Um, so they add variety and sometimes they'll add mission objectives to your play area. Uh, we have these, which I believe are mission tokens. It might be. These are other tokens. Like I said, I don't remember the names of stuff, but you don't need to know the names of stuff to know you like the game. And I like the game. Uh, over here we have some more tokens, um, so you can see what those look like. This game does have a lot going on with the components, but that's really cool. Uh, here, these are the ship tokens, so as you can kind of see, the green is going to go a little weird, of course, because I have my green screen. Um, there's different unique tokens for each attack ship, or each ship, and they have the name of the ship, the, the, the uh, information about the ship's capabilities, and then uh, you get to place those tokens inside the base, and that'll help you identify the ship. Um, the ships that are controlled by the game's AI, which are the Jem'Hadar attack ships, uh, they have a little bit of different information um, than the ones that you control. So that's pretty cool. Uh, over here you have, these are uh, mostly action tokens. Uh, over here, the green, yep, the green are action tokens. The red right here, these are critical hit tokens. Uh, you have these, which are these, I'm pointing at the back like you can see that. Uh, these are maneuver templates. Uh, so the templates correspond to possible maneuvers on the ship's maneuver dials. Um, so they'll be used when you're physically moving around the play area. Uh, we have ID tokens, which um, you insert those into the ship space as well to identify which cor cards correspond to the ship. Uh, so a lot of really cool stuff. Um, more punching than Waddle, and that's why I'm not going to punch it for you today, unless you really want me to punch it. If you, if you want me to punch the game on the stream right now, just let me know. I don't have to. I will if you want me to, but it's a lot of punching, so it might be kind of boring for you guys. Um, then over here, we have disabled and timed tokens, which are the yellow and red right here. Uh, you place these on top of cards uh, in order to prevent some or all of their effects. Uh, these are just more maneuver templates, the straight ones, as opposed to the cool curvy ones that you had here. Um, more ID tokens. And then kind of more of the same stuff. Maneuver templates. You have uh, these, of course, which are the Heroclix maneuver dials. Um, so you actually have to put these together. They come in multiple pieces and you kind of stack them on top and put them together. Um, but these will let you plan your maneuvers for your ships. And each uh, player controlled ship has its own maneuver dial. And then we have these lovely blue shield tokens, which are red on the other side. So they're double sided, which is cool. Uh, let's see. These are more, these are more action tokens that you have right here. Uh, more disabled tokens. And that is all your punch board. So six sheets of punch. Um, these punch like Waddle, so they punch very cleanly, so it's, it's a nice experience to punch them out. I, I've punched another copy of this game. But yes. So now, continuing on, this is, uh, what's called, oh, it's not, okay, it's, it's gonna be a little weird again, because of green screen, sorry. Uh, so this little square card, you'll see, you'll get it when... Um, you open the box, 
It is an enemy logic card. Uh, and what this is, is you use this to determine the maneuvers, actions, and attack targets uh, chosen by the enemy AI ships controlled by the game. So you can kind of see, it's it's really hard to show this, so I apologize. The Jem'Hadar attack ship, which are the enemy controlled ships in this game. Um, so this will help you figure out what they're doing. I'm saving the ships till last intentionally. I hope you guys know that. They're beautiful minis and they're painted and I can't wait to show them to you, but we're gonna show them off last. Of course, we have the plastic bases for the ships. So I should take them out of the Ziploc so you can actually see them and it doesn't just look like a blur of light. Uh, so these are the bases for the ships. Um, just nice plastic bases that you can put the ships together on. And there are five of these. Uh, of course, there are five ships in the box, so that makes sense. Uh, so just as an FYI, the game plays a varying number of players. Uh, you can play as a solo player, um, but one box can play up to two players. However, you can actually, if you want, you can use multiple copies of the game and actually make it a bigger game and a bigger experience, which is really fun. Um, I can't wait to show you the ships, Shere Khan. They're so cool. Um, so, you know, it, it's really cool because it's a campaign-based game and the more people you can gather to help with the campaign, the more likely you are to succeed. And another really cool thing about this game, I've talked about it before. Um, I apologize for pausing. I just, I like this game. Um, another really cool thing is that if you fail a mission, you don't lose the whole campaign. So I've noticed that in some campaign-based games, um, if you lose, you know, one mission, that's it, you're done. But in this game, losing a mission doesn't end the game. All losing a mission does is changes the next the next mission in the campaign and uh, changes the likelihood of whether or not you are going to succeed overall in winning the Dominion War and becoming a Starfleet legend. I want to become a Starfleet legend, so I want to win all, all the missions. Um, we're so proud of this game. It's It was a long time coming and we wanted to make sure it was really perfect. So we worked really hard on fine tuning every detail of it and it came out so good. So I, I'm loving that you guys are so excited about this. We're so happy with it. Uh, let's move on to the dice. There's, there's a bit of different dice in here. There's some custom dice. There's, you know, some classic dice. So of course we have a standard. The dice are gonna be weird because a lot of them are blue and green. Uh, standard D6, um, so of course just a lovely nice D6. Uh, there is a D12, um, so the D6, you actually, I should explain what the D6 does. Uh, you use the D6 with the enemy logic cards and the mission diagrams to control where and how the enemy ships move and act. Um, moving on to the, to the D12, the D12. Uh, you use the D12 to track how many rounds have passed during a mission. Oh, Dennis, you like the Akira-class starship? Good news! There's an Akira-class starship in this game, and I'll show it to you soon. Uh, and then we have custom dice as well. So there's two types of custom dice, the red custom dice and the green custom dice. I don't think you're going to be able to see the green custom dice, but... Yeah, so they're unfortunately not magical see-through dice. Like, that would be super cool. I would love dice like that. I would probably get carried away just rolling them over and over and over to watch them be all sparkly and magical. Um, but they are green custom dice. These are defense dice and they're used to resolve combat and other abilities during the game. Uh, there are also different icons on them, so the different icons have names. I'm going to show you this better on the red dice, um, but uh, it's, you can kind of see it. Um, so this icon right here, the little circular one with the plus sign, I think it means battle stations. I'm, I'm holding it sideways, maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't know off the top of my head what it's called. Uh, we have evade, which is this like... Okay, you can't really see this. I apologize. Um, but let's show you the red dice. You can't see those, because those are not green. Alright, so, 
here are the red dice. You can kind of see these beautiful custom dice. I'm going to show one off. So they have a bunch of different faces. They have, of course, blank, uh, which means they have no icon. They have the hit icon, uh, which is this little like diamondy star thing. Um, this is Battle Stations. I don't know why I got confused. I confused myself. Um, wait. Okay, so it's super hard to figure out the like left and right with the camera. Um, this means Battle Stations. Then we have this one, which means Critical Hit. Uh, and then, like I showed you before, I don't know if this has evade. Yeah, the attack dice don't have evade because they are attack dice. Um, but the evade kind of looks, to me at least, uh, like an Excelsior ship, which is also in this game. Um, like a swirly with an Excelsior ship. I mean, I guess that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, can you see it? Let's see. Yeah, there you can. You can kind of see the icon now. Um, yes. Surrender, I agree. I think that it's a great starter set for someone maybe who's new to attack wing and you know it's it's not traditional attack wing, but it does kind of allow you to learn the system and I think that's really cool. Um everything's also got like these really awesome, like in-depth explanations of the story to go with them. Um each can each mission. Uh the team at uh who the team at Lynn Vander who worked on this game, I don't know why I forgot their name, I knew that. Um, and Josh Dirksen, of course, designed the game, uh, did a really wonderful job with making the narrative really engaging and really interesting. And it's pretty cool uh, that, you know, we were able to do this with them. So, cards. Uh, the game comes with some cards. There are a few different things that they do. There's ship cards, maneuver cards. Uh, player cards, upgrade cards, and damage cards. So let me grab one of everything so I can show you. Da, 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 da. Oh, and enemy loadout cards. I'm, I'm, I confused myself again. I'm apparently very good at that today. All right. How is everyone doing today? Did everyone have a nice weekend? It is Tuesday, so the weekend's been over for a little while, but I'm hoping that you guys had, you know, a great weekend while I'm organizing these cards for you so I can show them to you. Because like I said, this is a fresh copy that I just opened. Alright. Things have different card backs too. Uh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Now I got it. All right. So there are different cards, like I said, that do different things. There are upgrade cards, like you can see here. Wait. All right. Gonna work. You gonna focus? Please focus. All right. There. You can kind of see it. Um. So the upgrade cards represent different upgrades that the players can purchase for their ships including crew, weapon, and tech upgrades, as well as elite talents, if their captain is capable of supporting them. You have enemy loadout cards, which you're not gonna really be able to see. It's, they're very uh, green toned. Um, okay, you can kind of see it. And they're double-sided. Um, and these are upgrades for the enemy ships, because many enemy ships do come equipped with their own upgrades. They're used to track a ship's ID number, it's equipped upgrades, and provide a place to place damage cards, which I'll show you in a minute, um, assigned to that enemy ship. And then we have maneuver cards. Uh, so these cards show the possible maneuvers for each player's ship. So for example, come on, cooperate please. The Excelsior class uh, ship, this shows the possible maneuvers for that ship, and then you have the Akira class ship. Please, please work. Um, I have to like hold it in an angle or the sun just shines directly onto it. Uh, so they just act as a kind of a guide for you to decide what maneuver you choose on your maneuver dial each round. Uh, here you have the ship cards. These just list the ship's 
statistics and special ability, um, the actions it can perform, the upgrades it can equip, and its point co cost for when you're building squads. Um, so nice, interesting things. Uh, player cards. So each player is a captain represented by a player card. So you become a captain in um, Starfleet uh, with this game, and this card tracks the player's faction, captain skill, uh, the point total you can spend when you're equipping upgrade cards, and the total experience points that you have accumulated during the campaign. So you do grow your captain as you're playing each mission, uh, which I feel like really makes you more immersed in the experience because you get better and better as you go, which is I think one of the most wonderful things about a game like this, is that you can do that and you can feel like you're really getting stronger and learning more as you're going through the Dominion War. Uh, over here we have damage cards, so they are very small. Do, 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 do. All right, you can kind of see them. Uh, the cards uh, track how much damage a ship has suffered, and then if there's special penalties that occur when a ship suffers a critical hit, uh, these cards will describe that penalty. All right, we're moving to the next thing. We are almost at the ships. I am almost ready to show you the plastic ships, which are super cool. Um, these are, of course, just the pegs and bases for um, the, uh, the ships themselves, as well as the little centerpiece for the dial, the hero click style. Taking out the beautiful insert again to get to the bottom here. So these are the rulers. Uh, so this is the range ruler. It's a two-sided cardboard ruler that's used to measure various distances during the game. This is just another maneuver template, as you can see. And then, of course, we have the rule book. As you can see, there's two things here. So you have, which one's the rule book? This is the rule book, and then this is the campaign book. Uh, you can also, obviously these come with the game, but if you want to check it out online, uh, if you go to whizkids.com, we actually have both books available for you to uh, look at in order to learn a little bit more about the game, learn what the missions are like. And like I was talking about before with that beautiful writing that's in the game, um, that is in the rule book. So definitely check that out. Um, of course we have this. Which I'm not sure what it's called, honestly. I'm tr I'm trying to figure out what the formal name for it is. I don't remember. I have the worst memory in the world. But um, it's like a base type planet obstacle. It it's involved in the missions. It's really cool. Um, I'm just apparently bad at explaining things today. Maybe I need more tea. Maybe less tea. I am just putting off showing you the ships. You know, to get you more excited as much as I can. But I'm out of other components. So next thing we're going to do is show off the awesome ships. Uh, Share Khan, the cards. I believe they they seem like they're standard size to me. Um, so yes, I would imagine they fit in a standard sleeve. Yeah. Surrender is absolutely right. They are standard size. Now, getting the ships out of... Plastic. That's apparently our, our, our mission for today. Uh, so here we go. We're going to start with the Jem'Hadar attack ships. So I'm going to try and... Yeah, okay, that's better. Um, so you can see they're beautifully painted. Uh, I just kind of describe... The, I always describe these as beetle ships because to me they look like little flying beetles. Um, so you can see like the colors on these are really gorgeous. The detail... Like, the little green, like here, it's it's going a little weird with the green screen, but it's actually like painted in with those colors. Um, and it's got a metallic sheen to it, which is really extra cool. And the Gemadar are, of course, your enemies in the game. So there's three of these. Um, I'm having trouble grabbing the other two out of the box. But there's three of them total. The underside, you can't really s I don't know if you could see it. Uh, but you can see there's like that slightly purplish pinkish 
underside. So the detail that went into painting these is like incredible. Um, they're really beautiful. Um, moving on to the Akira class, which is this one. Uh, so this is the Akira class ship. You can see it's also very detailed, very beautiful. It's we, we really care about the attack wing ships and really making sure that they look lovely and the paint jobs on these are just awesome. The sculpts are great. They are absolutely gorgeous. <clears throat> yeah, Shere Khan, I love the paint job. I think that they look amazing. Um, when I first saw these, I was like, oh, these are, oh my God, the attack wing fans are gonna love this. Uh, board game fans are gonna love this. It's just, they're gorgeous miniatures. They really came out beautiful. Um, and of course, we have the Excelsior class, which as you can see here, it is the classic ship. You can kind of see the top. I'm gonna try and back it up. And then on the underside, Dennis, I agree. I love the Excelsior class ship. I think it's lovely and gorgeous. Um, but that is, of course, Star Trek Alliance Dominion War Campaign. Uh, brand new game plays one, uh, one box plays one to two players, um, ages 14 and up. And then it plays in 30 plus minutes. So it depends on if you want to do one mission or you want to do the whole campaign. And it has a price point of $49.99. So it's a great price point. You get a lot of game out of it for that price point. Um, and I mean, you get some beautiful miniatures, you get some great components. All the components are really nice, really high quality. I cannot recommend it enough. I feel like I say that every show, but really like it's, it's an amazing game. It's super fun. Uh, the way that they've written this is super interesting. They did such a great job with the writing. I, I am over the moon about this game. Um, but yeah, I would absolutely recommend getting it. Uh, and now we're going to move on to the next part of our show, which I'm sure some of you are very excited for, of course. We have um, to show you, I'm gonna just shift us into the next part. We are going to talk about Super Skill Pinball Rant it, Ramp It Up, not Rant It Up, unless you're having a really bad game, then you might wanna rant it up. Uh, of course, Super Skill Pinball 4K was a big hit of our la ours last year. Uh, it's a great game. It had four awesome pinball tables in a roll and write format. And we are so excited to have the next game in the series, Super Skill Pinball Ramp It Up, with four all new tables. Um, and I'm excited to be able to show you the cover art in just a moment, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the different tables before I show you the cover art. Um, there is, of course, Go for Gold. Uh, it introduces a new extra flipper and provides a great starting point for new players. Um, you can pan for gold or ride Zev's Folly into the back glass, which is where you ride the log flume, search the lost mine, and navigate the falls. So Go for Gold is super fun. It's super cute. Uh, you're going to see art from each of these tables in a minute on so the, that way of me. It's my left, but I think it's technically your right. So you're going to see in a minute. Uh, there is the Pin Pals table, which is wrestlers entering the ring in tag teams of two, uh, each teammate with a slightly different table. And then as you play, you activate bonuses for each other and build extra multipliers when you enter the cage together. Uh, so you want to coordinate on this table. I've actually uh, played this table fairly recently and it was super cool to be playing and for my teammate to be like, oh, you get multi-ball or, you know, oh, you can get bonus points. And that was really fun and exciting. And the it, it created a different dynamic with the game, which I thought was very fun. Uh, High Roller Heist packs all the action of a classic casino caper into two rounds. And that makes it one of the fastest game tables in Super Skill Pinball. You recruit your crew, choose your target and execute your plan without getting caught by security. Uh, it includes three different possible targets for your heist, which means there's a lot of replayability. And each of those different targets is represented by a unique minigame on the back glass. 
which is so fun and so cool. And then lastly, Top Speed, which turns your pinball into a race car and opens up an all new challenge for experienced players with adjustable speed. You can add one, two, or three to your dice rolls, building big numbers and even bigger bonuses. But if you go too fast, you gotta be careful because the flippers won't be able to stop you. So this is, like I said, this is a standalone sequel to Super Skill Pinball 4K. And we have been very quiet about revealing the box art, but the box art is ready to go and we are so excited to share it with you. So without further ado, we're gonna, I'm gonna do a little drum roll. Uh, here is the cover of Super Skill Pinball, Ramp It Up. Ta-da! This is so fun and so cool. So I'm gonna go over what uh, thing represents what table. I'm sure you can tell, but just in case you can't. Uh, on the top left over there, we have uh, top speed. So that is the one I was describing with the race car where you add one, two, or three to your dice rolls. Top right is Pin Pals, the wrestlers, uh, the wrestling theme table where you team up with a partner and score bonuses for each other. Um, I think the art for that one is super fun and super cute and it's, it's really cool. Um, bottom left is High Roller Heist where you are uh, participating in a casino caper with uh, different mini games on the back glass. And then bottom right is Go for Gold, a great starting point for a new player. It has an extra flipper um, and it's super adorable. Not as adorable as Noodles, who has hidden away, um, definitely because he is so excited. He's shy and not because I forgot to put him uh, into this, this screen. Um, it's definitely because he's shy and doesn't want the gophers to take his, uh, his superiority as the cutest penguin, even though gophers aren't penguins. This joke made more sense in my head, guys. Um, but yes, so this is the cover art. Uh, towards the bottom you can see it features some of the accolades we got for the first game. Uh, Man vs. Meeple, The Dice Tower, Shut Up and Sit Down, uh, Drive Through Games, uh, Game Boy Geek. So that's pretty cool. Um, but the colors are gorgeous. It's really, it, I love the logo for this one too with the pink and the graffiti kind of look. It's, it, I think it's very cool, very interesting, very fun. Um, and as you can see, all four tables have a different art style that really lend themselves to the theme of that table, and I think that's extra fun. Uh, so this is, of course, Super Skill Pinball Ramp It Up. That's, the, like I said, the second game in the Super Skill Pinball series. It is a standalone sequel. You do not need the first game to be able to understand this game, but both games are great, so get them both. Uh, it plays one to four players, ages 12 and up, in 30 minutes, and it uh, is $24.99. Uh, we are expecting to release it uh, right now in September 2021. Uh, always keep an eye on our social media for updates about this game, updates about future releases, uh, updates about anything you have questions for. But I mean, this box art is so cool. It's so fun and we're so excited about this game. Uh, we really love Super Skill Pinball. We're so proud of it and we hope that you love it too. Um, so, that is the end of our show. Noodles is, of course, back. He was definitely hiding behind the logo before, though. That's, that's where he was. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the unboxing of Star Trek Alliance Dominion War Campaign. I hope you enjoyed the awesome reveal of Super Skill Pinball Ramp It Up. I was so happy to be able to bring it to you uh, for the first time in the world uh, of anyone seeing it. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week. Be sure to tune in to Mini Mayhem tomorrow at noon with V. Uh, she has some great minis to show off for you, of course, and I'm sure it'll be a f super fun show. You can follow WizKids on social media. We are WizKids on Facebook, WizKids Games on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and you can also follow me if you would like. I am at the, black, the underscore Blackthorn. Uh, on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, or Jessa Blackthorn on Facebook. I would love to have you. Um, but thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you drink delicious tea and stay warm and stay healthy and stay safe. Um, I love you. Noodles loves you. And I will see you next week for another great show. Goodbye! <laughs>